Would you like to 10X your productivity and stop feeling so overworked and overwhelmed? Welcome to the Extreme Productivity Podcast with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for giving me the gift of your time. I know time is worth more than money. You know time is worth more than money. So it means a lot that you're investing 10 or 15 minutes here today to learn how to achieve extreme productivity while also overcoming that feeling of being overworked and overwhelmed. Now, I'm Kevin Cruz, and in the last episode, I shared three simple ways to get more energy. And today, I'm going into the reader email to answer a question. I'm going to be answering the question about how to deal with the unexpected that happens at work. But first, I want to share this podcast review from Mel Davis 1231 on iTunes. Mel wrote, I listen to podcasts all the time. The way Kevin explains time management really resonated with me. Something just clicked. Creating a to-do list on a calendar with a time and duration is working. I implemented this technique immediately. Also, the 3210 email system. I'm getting more done in one day than I have in weeks. Thank you, Kevin. I can't wait to hear your next episode. So thanks, Mel, for leaving that iTunes review. If you like any of these episodes, it would mean the world to me if you would take one minute to go to iTunes and leave a review for the Extreme Productivity Podcast, because that's the way other people will find it. The more reviews we get, the more iTunes will recommend the show to others. And before I answer this reader's question, if you have any questions about time management or productivity or something you've heard me talk about in this show, just send me an email, Kevin at kevincruz.com and I'll be sure to get back to you and if I use your question as part of an episode I'll send you something fun maybe a master your minutes t-shirt or uh, autographed book or whatever other uh, cool thing I've got laying around so here's the question it comes from someone named Ben Ben writes dear Kevin I have begun listening to your podcast recently, and I particularly liked your episode about not using to-do lists and instead scheduling your day in 15-minute chunks. I do have a question that has emerged from my first day of attempting to schedule myself. Picture the scene, and let me add, this is Kevin, that Ben is one heck of a writer. I love this email. So here he goes. Picture the scene. I'm there on the train at 6 a.m. this morning, heading into work. I spend the hour train ride scheduling the entire week into 15-minute chunks. Side note, this made it clear to me how much free time I have to go and focus on growing the business and not working in it. However, disaster strikes in the office when a series of events transpire to remove me from my office and send me on a wild goose chase around the city of London. This blows my carefully scheduled day out of the water. I want to ask about your thoughts on scheduling carefully yet still allowing for flexibility within the schedule, especially given I work in an industry where clients will often request meetings at the drop of a hat and I'm expected to oblige. These guys pay the bills, and so it's not really advisable to keep them waiting for the next scheduled opening. Is it about accepting that these guys form part of my most important task and risk the loss of focus on bigger, wider goals? Or is it just the case that you'll need to be flexible? Thanks again, and please keep up the amazing work. Ben. Okay, dear Ben, here's what I think about that awesome question. Congratulations on your commitment to giving up the to-do list and working and living entirely from your calendar. It's going to take some getting used to, but I do think this is one of those core practices that will put you in the top 1% of productivity. And I get some version of your question very often. You know, what do we do when our well-planned minute-by-minute day is thrown into turmoil because of unexpected fires to put out or meetings that run long, family emergencies, and so on? And let me share that, you know, this is a problem that happens to me as well. In the last week alone, I went to pick up my son early from school because he was sick. I returned an urgent call from a prospective client. I took a long call from a journalist from the Wall Street Journal who was on a deadline. And I even rushed my cat to the veterinarian when he suddenly fainted. (laughs) Yes, my cat fainted. You can't make this stuff up. 
Uh, they think he's going to be okay, but yes, my cat seems to have some sort of fainting disorder. Anyway, while we are all alive, we're going to find unexpected and unscheduled events that are going to just continue to intrude upon our days. Problems, both professionally and personally, are just part of life. But there are several things we can do to mitigate the impact they have on our schedule and on our overall productivity. So what are they? First, actually schedule some buffer time onto your calendar. Now, most of us, you know, we're eager high achievers, so we want to toss out our to-do list and put every activity into every minute of our day on the calendar. You know, we want to squeeze every drop of productivity out that we can. Very noble, it's the right, uh, right idea, but it's also unrealistic. And true productivity ninjas actually leave some padding in their schedule. One CEO I used to work for, uh, he never scheduled meetings or phone calls back to back. Uh, if a meeting or call runs long, then it's not going to run into anything else because it's not bumping into anything. And if it ends on time, he has a few minutes to sort of rest and re-energize and prepare for the next meeting. I've previously talked about how the LinkedIn uh, CEO, Jeff Weiner, he wrote a blog post about how he schedules nothing time into his calendar. He doesn't leave a blank. It's actually blocked off as nothing. And he always puts the time to good use, but it lets him kind of make an audible call at the line of scrimmage, as they say. So he can decide, is he going to use that time to do some coaching with one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with direct reports? Or is he going to just think strategically or rest and recover? So while having multiple buffers throughout the day may seem counter to our efforts for extreme productivity, the true key to productivity is actually maximizing our energy and focus and planning what we're going to be working on. So these little buffer time slots can either be put to good use to protect your core activities or again, you can use them to sort of replenish your own stores of energy. Now, second, similarly, you can also create a general recurring time block for high value tasks. So for example, my old boss and business partner, Rudy Carson, I talk about him a lot. He certainly was a mentor to me. Uh, he was always great about returning calls on the same day. It didn't matter what was going on. You know, he has a dozen people reporting to him. He's managing you know, a $100 million a year business. You know he's got all kinds of fires to put out. But whenever I would email or call, you know, he would call me back before five and everybody knew he always would do that. So once I asked him, you know, how do you, how do you find the time to get back to everybody on the same day? And he says, oh, it's easy. I just reserve four to five o'clock every day on my calendar as return phone calls. Now, maybe there's some days when he doesn't have many calls to return, but I think on most, he puts that time to good use. Now, if you're a super busy consultant, Maybe you need a one hour time block or maybe two different one hour time blocks just called client phone calls or client emergencies. And that way, if somebody you know reaches out to you right away, you can say, hey, you know, I'm going to be in your neighborhood at one o'clock anyway, or I was planning on getting out of the office at one o'clock today anyway. Can I stop in then or can I return your call then? Third idea Train your clients what to expect from you. Train your customers what to expect from you. Train your, your boss what to expect from you. So this was a difficult one for me to learn when I was uh, you know, building a busy consulting practice. You know, I used to believe if a client called, I should always answer it. I would try to answer it on the first ring. Um, if we were going to set up a meeting, I would say, you know, what's good for you? And then I would move everything on that day to try to fit them in unless there was another client meeting that was, that was scheduled to take place. Later, I realized that while good customer service is important, they weren't hiring me because I picked up the phone on one ring and I could always go to their first choice time on their calendar. You know, they were hiring me for the outcomes I could deliver, for the value I was bringing, for my knowledge. So the key is to view your work with your clients as a partnership, a long-term partnership over time. They want you to be successful. They want your firm to be successful. So it's a partnership into how best to work together. You know, so I think that if you train them up front that you will always return their phone calls before the end of the day, 
And if they have an emergency, they can hit zero and ask to have you paged or ask your assistant to track you down. Or they should always call your office number unless it's an emergency, then call your mobile number. Whatever your rule is, as long as they know up front what your work pace is like and that there's always like a, a way to get to you if it's a super duper emergency, they're going to be okay with that. Um, and another trick along those lines, I knew a consultant that would always update his email and his voicemail every single day because he said, you know, he clients didn't worry about him getting back to the, him, them right away as long as they knew what was going on. So, if, for example, uh, you know, I might leave a voicemail message that says, you know, on my set up my voicemail box to say, hey, thanks for calling. This is Kevin Cruz. Today's Wednesday, April 13th. I'll be meetings. I'll be in meetings and unavailable until 1 p.m. today. If it's a true emergency, please hit zero and ask to speak to whomever. So if they call, they're going to get it. They're like, okay, uh, yeah, it's an emergency, but Kevin will get back to me after one. Or you can say, I'm out of the office all day in client meetings. You know, Leave a message if it's an emergency. Otherwise, I'll be back in the morning or something like that. You just need to train the clients to know uh, what to expect from you know when they work with you. Fourth, so Ben, you talked about is this client time your MIT time? No, no. MIT time is something that's going to support your long-term goals that you want to work on on a consistent basis. So while putting you know clients first, putting out their fires, handling unexpected crises, all those things are important. They're not your MIT. And uh, so your MIT should be the task that's going to have the greatest long-term impact on your firm. And listen, maybe you need to schedule your one-hour MIT time before you even go into the office, you know, at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning. Or if you're so short-staffed right now or things are so crazy in your firm, maybe you can only schedule MIT time one day a week or two days a week. But it is definitely different than, than servicing your clients. It's more about having that consistent focus on MIT and thinking about it and planning for it than doing it, say, two hours every single day. Last piece of advice, Ben, everyone out there, listen, you have to accept <laughs> some days will be one of those days. It happens to the best of us, and sometimes our, our calendars will be blown to bits from emergencies. We just roll with the punches and get back on track as quickly as we can. So good luck, Ben. Thanks for the question. So how can we all apply this? What are some really easy takeaways? Just build in a, a few buffer times into your schedule. You know, try not to do back-to-back -back phone calls or meetings. Put in one or two 30-minute chunks to give you some buffers. And um, you will get better at estimating how long things take. You'll get better at this working and living from your calendar the more you stick with it. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast in iTunes or Stitcher so you don't miss my next episode where I'm going to be telling you about my $25,000 wager with Sir Richard Branson. And if you have a question for me, you got something on your mind or just want to say hi, shoot me an email. I'm at Kevin at KevinCruz.com. Until next week, remember, master your minutes to master your life.